Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. You are most welcome. Today we're going to have a look at some very, very impressive early British jet bombers. The Canberra, in fact, from too many factories. Now then, first a bit of history. So the Canberra, I've got some notes for this today because I was amazed when I found out how successful the Canberra had been. I had to write it down because I knew I wouldn't remember all the countries that we actually sold this aircraft to. But first things first. So the Canberra was the replacement for the de Havilland Mosquito, uh, obviously to be first, uh, the first British jet bomber. And the actual concept um, and requirement was first laid down in 1944, long before the end of the war, but um, for a variety of reasons to do with economics and availabilities and, uh, and the developing engine technology, um, the, the plane actually entered service in um, early 1951 and was pretty impressive to put it mildly. Uh, I'm sure the RAF would have liked it in service perhaps a year or two earlier but the fact is they kind of got it right first time, developed it properly, um, it didn't suffer from some of the many problems that things like the uh, the Comet airliner did, you know. There were one or two issues. Um, there was an issue actually with the aircraft's rudder and the, the elevators at the back, they had this sort of fluttering vibration problem that caused them some instability. They made some very tiny changes to the profile and the shape and it went away and they fixed it. Anyway, um, so it enters service with the Royal Air Force but because it's so, it's so fast and it's so um, very streamlined aircraft, you'll see in the, the pictures and the model that um, it's got like flush rivets, everything's very flush, it's very aerodynamic. Um, it's got this sort of, a, even by looking at it, you, you get the sense it's going to be possibly quite a high altitude aircraft because it's got this sort of bubble canopy that looks like the sort of thing you see in experimental research planes of the era, you know, very high altitude. So, yes, indeed it was because in the event the aircraft achieved a number of records. It was the first uh, jet bomber that ever went across the Atlantic non stop, so that was very impressive. And it actually managed a ceiling altitude of 70,000 feet, which is unheard of, you know. I mean, there's no fighter is going to get, get 1951, no fighter is going to meet you at 71,000 feet, which is it's almost 71. No chance. It's in a world of its own. It's at a very high altitude, and just what the doctor ordered. And it could carry bombs and stores and all sorts of things, and it was also used extensively as a reconnaissance aircraft. But I mentioned I got a piece of paper, because I said I wouldn't remember. This was kind of ahead of its time, really, uh, when it came in at the beginning of the 50s. Um, instantly, other countries, including the United States, realised they had nothing to match it. And the United States bought the, the aircraft and produced it under licence. Um, and there was over a thousand of these bombers were built, which is a lot, you know. Especially when you think how the pace of technology was changing, changing very quickly at that time. Anyway, a list of the people who bought the plane, apart from the USA, I say they made it, it was made by, um, by the Martin Corporation, they actually made it, called it the B-57, but the Americans bought it, you know you've got a winner, they bought that, and of course later they bought the Harrier as well. Um, but we sold the plane, plane to Australia, Rhodesia, New Zealand, and by the way the Australians also made it under a government license locally. India bought it, South Africa, Sweden, Venezuela, Peru, France, West Germany, Ethiopia, to name but a few, and of course, Argentina bought them. <laughs> and the Argentinians actually used to them in the Falklands and got them both shot down. Uh, one was a Sea Cap missile from HMS Cardiff, and the other one was by Sea Harrier that, that shot it down in a bit of a dogfight, you know. Of course, it couldn't match the Sea Harrier because that's a very small, manoeuvrable fighter jet, basically. But, but you know, it had 15 countries bought, bought the aircraft. It must be one of the most successful ever uh, British export military. Uh, planes that we've ever had since the Spitfire, really, you know. Um, there we go, but uh, so anything else I need to tell you? Mm, that's pretty much it, really, so I'm going to get rid of my piece of paper now. I don't usually use a prompt, but I'm never going to remember all those countries. just shows you how successful it was. Anyway, so what we've got here, there's rumours, one of the reasons for the video is there's rumours abound that Airfix are about to re-release the Canberra. Um, I've been trying to find the concrete information, I've been struggling a bit, but anyway, this is the 2008 um, release that they came out with, which um, it's been uh, reboxed a couple of times with different decals. Um, should be fairly decent, should be fairly decent, but before we get into this, we have something 
a little bit earlier from an alternative manufacturer, Aero Club. Now then, those of you that watch my videos will know that I can sometimes get a bit cross and a bit intolerant with some manufacturers if they don't come up to what I consider to be the standards of the 21st century. However, this particular uh, kit is a 1980s kit and it's a multimedia kit so it's made of uh, it's got injection molded plastic, it's got vac form uh, which is uh, polystyrene basically it's got resin, it's got white metal, it's got a bit of everything really in it so we have to bear that in mind and this was out long before the Airfix product was out um, in between, I think in 2006 there was um, uh, is it Master Airframes? I think they brought out in 2006 they brought a camera out which was fairly decent and then the one we're going to see from Airfix but this was the only one you could get for many many years so I'm not going to apply my normal ruthless standards of excellence. I think we have to have a bit of a, an open mind, bear in mind that at the time nobody was making a decent sized Canberra, you know. Uh, this is 48 scale, don't forget, so it's going to be quite big. And nobody else was offering you that. So um, let's, let's have a look at this first and then we'll compare it to the injection molded airfix that comes later. So this is like 20, 25 years earlier than the one we'll see. I'll, I'll go fairly briefly through this. I'm not a fan of some of these um, technology, I've got to be honest, so I won't let that cloud my judgment, I'll try and be fair. So, first of all, zoom in a bit. So we've got some Aero Club instructions here. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to preface it, say don't expect too much of the kit, but they're doing better than the modern Chinese are doing. They're giving you a proper description, talks about the history of the aircraft, uh, even gives you recommendations about how to go about doing the construction. So. You know, we've talked about people like Meng and Great Wall Hobby and uh, Hong Kong Model and all these other people. They're not doing this. Come on, this is not hard to produce a sheet. All you need is to do is employ somebody who speaks English or an interpreter to make sure it's all done correctly. You can do this, you guys. So this gets a good, off to a good start, I'd say. Bit of detail. Um, goes on to telling you, because you've got all these different... Uh, because you've got all these different multimedia elements to it, different materials, it's all requiring different types of gluing and different sanding and different ways to cut, uh, most of which are, I'm not an expert in, I'll be honest. Um, but it tells you exactly what to do, and it's like a, a written, detailed set of instructions, which you really will need to read, I think, for sure. Um, not very really visually exciting, but very, very helpful and instructive. So I think that our friends in China could learn a lot from this, uh, even though it is 1980s. We need to have some words, we need to have some explanation, some history, uh, directions, explanation of what's going on and which parts are which. Please take note. Anyway, then we have got... Okay, no, that's the wrong way obviously. Then we've got the actual instructions, the visual instructions, and it's all the sort of bulkheads for the... Uh, bulkheads and spars mainly that we've got here um, and these are essentially uh, showing you all the the bulkheads where your gear is going to go and that kind of stuff then which is a little bit great little hobby like this isn't it <laughs> then we've got the uh, the assembly coming in of your uh, fuselage and all the internal parts it looks quite detailed again if they're using resin they're going to be able to show quite a bit of detail um, you've got cross members and bulkheads going in, you've got stirrups and straps, uh, throttle controls, looks quite detailed, looks quite impressive. Um, and then you've got your front gear, and we go on to this next section, I'm not sure I like the way it's separated with their stable, but anyway, no more ideas on that, I've got the colour call out, so come to that in a second. Um, kind of jumps around a bit, doesn't it? Okay. Right, <laughs> then we've got the um, the two sides of the, the fuselage. Um, warns you to be careful, don't remove too much plastic. Um, don't remove too much plastic from the edges of the centre of the fuselage, it causes the fuselage top to curve. Yeah, well this is because it's quite a thin PE material, you know. And you've got your injection moulded part, injection moulded parts there, which are the tails and uh, uh, elevators, etc., vertical stabilizers, horizontal stabilizers, etc. Um, and then you've got your wings as well, which are going to come on. Um, 
and the, this is where I think it gets a bit challenging I suspect you know getting the wing halves together polystyrene vac form but anyway people that have made these kind of kits and had to because that was your only choice in the past will you know be very familiar with how how to go about it more than I, I suspect then we've got um, showing the fuselage completed um, you've got your canopy going on uh, I mean the concept of it is quite good I've got to say it's, um, it's quite sensible you've got wing spars and then the wings are going on to the end of that spar drop tanks and you've got your intakes for the engines uh, which are metal parts that look, look quite realistic um, and then you've got various uh, stencils are being shown I'm not sure why I've shown at this stage but anyway um, nose wheel door uh, it's quite involved. It's quite involved. Starter exhaust vent position. It's quite. It's quite good. They've, they've thought it through. These instructions have had some proper thought going to them. There's more than you can say for some of them today. I've got to say. And then uh, finally, you've got the colour call out of the machines. Uh, basically, it's in black and white. But uh, yeah, uh, and it'll probably make it into quite an interesting looking aircraft. I suspect. Hmm. Three nine squadron. Yeah, and the camera was, uh, as I say, used by many, many air forces in many, many different countries for different purposes. It was a reconnaissance plane as well as a bomber, high-level reconnaissance, long before the U-2, you know. Let's have a look at the parts then, I'll zoom you in for this. Just leave this over here. <coughs> got a bag here. I'll zoom you. I'm the zoomer. <laughs> got a bag of plastic parts. So this is the injection moulded bits. Um, it's not quite nice. It's just uh, it out carefully. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, um, there's some nice detailing, uh, plenty of rivets are visible. Um, interestingly. Uh, I didn't realise there were so many rivets that were visible because I thought the whole point of the camera was it was very flush obviously not at the back end anyway um, and of course there's this um, uh, the later camera, I think it was the later camera, has got this fillet on the tail this has got the more simple tail design um, but it's quite nice and as I say there's plenty of rivet detail, look at this Yeah, that's quite good actually. You've got your uh, slipper tanks and your underwing chin. I mean, it's not got the fine panel living and engraving. This is what you're noticing is that we are looking into the dim and distant past here. It's not very heavily engraved. I think when you get a primer and a, a load of paint and a wash on this, these panel lines are probably going to vanish some of them. Not so much on the tail, but some of these finer bits here. Then we've got our our cockpit area. Whoops, cockpit area. And of course, we don't have any lugs to locate them, unfortunately. I always think it's good to have some lugs, but not too many, unless you like Tamiya and you get them all bang on every time. But you can see there, it's uh, yeah, again, quite quite fine panel lining. I think the real danger of you you need to be very light with your painting on something like this because it's just going to vanish. Then over here, we've got some. Uh, of the gear doors look okay don't they quite nicely detailed but it's all a bit soft isn't it and a bit underdone somehow today you know if you saw that you wouldn't accept it as being good enough I think but it's relative isn't it it's uh, you know for early 80s that's not too bad plenty worse probably coming out of airfix themselves at that time to be honest they weren't any great shakes in the early 80s I can tell you Right, let's put those back. I'll zoom back out again when you're looking at this. Um, yeah, so in terms of injection molded plastic, obviously not the best, you know, the best in the world. But it was never going to be, was it? But uh, it looks okay, it's acceptable. Nothing wrong with it. Just a bit, just a bit lightly done, perhaps. Make sure don't break anything. So, 
easier said than done sometimes. <laughs> right, okay, so that's that one. Now then, resin parts. So we've got some uh, jet pipes basically and wheels. So look at these bringing nice and close. So, of course, resin we've come to expect these days will be much more detailed than the injection molded plastic. Um, not entirely convinced that's necessarily the case here, but there's nothing wrong with them. Got some nice little vent detail there. See that? That's nice. And you've got your exit of your engines here, the trailing edge. Exhaust pipes are so to speak. Whoops. Then we've got our wheels and tyres. A couple of those. Quite nice, aren't they? Not bad at all, actually. Those are okay. We tread on them. Good tread. Yep, like that. So they're okay, actually. It's not, it's not a hugely detailed component anyway. I'm not sure it shows the best parts to mould there. Obviously the wheels and tyres are great. But... Then, we get, then it gets, starts to get complicated now. This is where we're going to get into trouble. So we've got some white metal components here. Things like jet black. I'm not going to take them all out because there's a lot of tiny parts here. So I'll just get a little selection out for you. And we've got things like the fan blades, which are pretty good in fairness. And we've got things like seats, lots of small parts and legs, gear legs for the undercarriage. Um, it's pretty fine. Some fine work going on here. It's not bad, you know. Uh, we've got a wheel here. Yeah, the front. I think that's the front of the nose wheels. Which is quite nicely done. The white metal dust all over my gloves. <laughs> oh yeah, here we've got a wheel. Now if I empty this out, I'm not going to get it back in here. So I'm just being a bit cautious. There we go, look at this. That's the actual wheel. The wheel itself. It's quite nice, isn't it? So there's some pretty fine stuff going on here. Lots of little components, levers, a lot of the cockpit detail, wiring, etc. Plumbing. And the leg. A little bit of, I think that's the chin. Got a seat here. Not sure seats in white metal is the best idea, but it's interesting, isn't it? Anyway, I'm not going to get every part out. I, mean, I don't want to damage them. And uh, but you got look at this. These are seat stirrups. So this is your pedal stirrups. It's a great detail. It's very well done. It's pretty fine, isn't it? It's really tiny stuff. There you are. This is part of the uh, hinge mechanisms for the gear. Again, very small. So that's actually quite impressive. I'm not sure they've chosen all those parts, uh, you know, like the wheels and things. I'd have put that in resin itself, but but no, they've uh, what they have done. They've done very, very fine, gentle with it. Very fine, very accurate. A lot of bits are flaking off. <laughs> it's, it's just dust and stuff. But anyway, there we go. So quite a collection of parts there white metal. So you're going to have to use all these different sorts of glues and things, aren't you, to actually be able to glue it. Now, here we go, we've got the actual, huh, the clear parts, which are vac-formed, clear-ish. We've got two of them. So there you've got your canopy. And I think there's a couple of windows, aren't there? Is there a window in it? Yeah, it's the nose bubble. Nose bubble. Quite yellow looking. But uh, that's vac form in that era for you. I suppose you could, uh, don't know if you can do much about that and then dip it in like that. Then, we get into, oops, we've got some big stuff here. This is the vac form. This is where I get a bit scared now. I've never done a vac form kit before. Not my cup of tea, really. <laughs> but, plenty of people have. And,. So what you've got basically, we've already seen that the rudder, ignore this bit, because the rudder was actually provided as part of the uh, injection moulder. So it's all the big stuff really, it's vac formed. So here is your, 
not bad detail actually, it's better than I expected if I'm honest. A uh, fair bit of panel line detail, it's not, again it's very very shallow so you don't want to paint it too much. But, mmm, it's quite solid, it's actually very robust, it's really thick, it's about 3mm that. That's quite good, that's better than I was expecting at all. It's alright actually, let's have a look at the rest. Wings now, back form again. Form wings. But again, it's about three millimetres again, it's quite solid actually. Not the flimsy, horrible paper like uh, product I was expecting. It's quite quite rigid, quite decent strength. And there's a fair bit of detail, look at those panel lines. Yeah. That's that's decent. That's decent. It's very reasonable. Kind of slightly better than I expected if I'm honest. I was expecting the absolute horror show. <laughs> If I'm truthful, but it's not, it's okay. Uh, finally there is a packet of decals uh, which are stuck in the box so I'm not going to unstick them, I'm just going to show them to you. Nice looking decals in fairness. Uh, quite a lot of carry film though around the numbers. Don't know if you can make that out, can you see that? Yeah, that's a bit a bit nasty, but um, the actual quality of the decal itself looks quite nice, so you just going to have to trim them, that's all. But I'm going to put that back and so put it back. It's quite tricky. Let's just zoom you out so you can see what the heck's going on. <sighs> something a bit different, isn't it? Um, and lots of different skill sets required to actually build something like this. Um, I'm not sure if I've got them. <laughs> All the patience I've got to be honest. I'm a bit lazy these days, but there we go. Uh, actually, slightly better than I was expecting, if I'm honest. And I haven't seen it before, but I opened it. Um, and you've got that instructions there. I like the instructions. They made, some effort went into those instructions. It's been, it's as though it's been built by modellers, which is always a good thing. Every time you want that. Uh, I think today we have far too many manufacturers. I'm afraid of including Airfix in this. Not, not completely, but they've got one or two people who are not really modellers. Uh, they've got one, one or two that are. Not very good at it. Um, but I don't really understand uh, manufacturers employing people to design CAD and they're not model makers, so CAD is almost like theoretical design. Uh, model making at the end of it, I'm not suggesting they should be great model makers, but they should have a go at it, they should have a, a grip on what the issues are. Uh, and I get the impression of the air people, but the people that built that are modeling enthusiasts that designed it and uh, did a fair good job, I'd say. Oh, uh, marks out of 10 for that. Uh, by modern standards, I'd say seven and a half to eight, really. I think um, relative to its time, it's not too bad. So, the camera from Airfix has got some work to do, hasn't it? <laughs> so we'll jump forward 25 years here, um, at least. Let's have a look at what we've got then. So it's in one of these rather nasty, and they're all like this, aren't they? From sort of early, early mid-2000s. The box art wasn't particularly, yeah, filling you with any great enthusiasm, but, um, is it it's actually a Hella product, this, or is it the Airfix? I think it's actually Airfix themselves, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. But made in China. So it was, uh, it was injection molding we've done elsewhere, which was very much the vogue then. Now, the person who owns this uh, has got lots of extras, which we'll, we'll talk about, I think, at the end. Because we've got different, uh, yeah, different tails and things. Yeah. No, in fact, we'll talk about that now, and then we'll move on to the ethics. We'll get these out of the way, just to qualify it. So what we've got, whoops. I'm going to have to move things a bit. Let's just move the box out. What we have got... Um, uh, the owner of this has decided he wants to make it like the prototype, um, which is... Let's get the picture, here we go. Now the prototype, VN799, has this uh, kind of a fillet ahead of the, uh, ahead of the tail, aerodynamic fillet, um, and later that was dropped. Um, and you can also see that there are two versions of the tail, right? the round top and the flat top here. So, some quite nice additions here from Aviation Workshop, no sorry, who's made this, who's it say? Oh, can it, sorry. No, I'm reading it. Camera to the manufacturer. So, uh, so, what have we got? Two different tails. Have a look at these. 
Now we're talking resin here of course, but we're talking much more modern resin. So you can see straight away uh, the forming is perhaps a little bit better, it's quite thick, it's quite strong looking. Here's your flat tail and here is your round tail. So that's, that's really rather nice actually. Um, yeah, Very fine panel lining on the trim tab on the rudder there. Uh, yeah, I'm calling it the tail, it's the rudder isn't it? It's the, it's the big rudder on the camera, so they're both rudders. In fact it's the top of the tail, so flat tail, rear tail. Um, and then the fillet I mentioned is here and that obviously goes ahead of the of the main tail unit. Uh, and you might have to just graft that in a little bit I think with the kit. We'll see later on, but that's quite nice isn't it? Good options there. So that's the camera and we've also got a bit of clear from them because the prototype had a slightly different style of canopy um, and it was much more open. Slightly, um, some slight issues I think with this, the look of it. It was some like crazy in it. Um, that might polish out I think, it's just on the surface. Yeah, it's on the top actually, not on the inside. Um, it's a very clear bubble canopy and later they had it so that it was sort of um, there wasn't as much glass area and it was covered over at the back here uh, in the, uh, the fuselage colour. Uh, whether it was actually metal or just uh, like a, a covering I'm not sure. But there we are, so that's Canet which is quite impressive stuff to be fair. I like that. Can I get it back in the bag in the box there? Yes we can. Right. Then we've got intake covers. This is two mics resin. Two mics. Canberra electric, electric camera engine covers, intakes, intakes, intakes. Um, so this is your FOD covers as we call them. Foreign object debris. Or foreign object dust covers. And we have, there we go, red of course, and uh, a couple of other bits of, little tiny bits which you don't actually recognise, not sure what they're supposed to be actually, odd, so I'll read what it says, yeah, intake covers, do, 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 do. you cut out the centre. Anyway. anyway, enough of that. We won't dwell on that one too long because it's quite simple, isn't it? Pretty straightforward. And I'll pop that back in there. Fitting the covers, joining the intake. Oh, I was going to show them. Just a little bit of advice in there for you as well. That's that one. And then we just got a couple which are probably won't open because they are so all stapled up on it. I know they are open. Wheel well. Can get in. Wheel wells. Look at this. Now then, they're impressive, aren't they? This is—is uh, is it Pavlo? Yeah, Pavlo in the Czech Republic. Um, which make lots of good stuff. So we've got the uh, wheel well bays, which look fantastic, to be honest. You see all the electrical wiring detail in there. On top of that, we've got. Uh, a couple of the doors as well, and we have got actuators, looks like a couple of gas bottles, pressurised, oops, the camera started not to work, and then I think these are actuator, actuator arms, rods, nice stuff indeed. Like it, no problems there. Very nice. Pop that back in. If we can. Okay. Last but not, not, not least, I should say, we have got the front gear bay. Again, lots and lots of lovely detail there. Smash it. 
So those are very nice. Not sure what it costs, but I'm guessing it's about 15 to 20 pounds, something like that. Maybe, maybe a bit less, maybe about 12. Um, so that's the extras out of the way. We'll put them to one side. And we will have a proper look at Airfix's kit. I know we have a quick slope of copy, if you just excuse me for a second. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. Really must stop this green screening. I promise you, when you're doing a model review, it's a lot harder than you think it is because you're trying to make coherent sense that's correct, move on to the next thing, and at the same time do the photography all yourself. It's not easy. <laughs> So please forgive me, uh, I do I do occasionally get carried away and forget that you're not seeing anything which is not very good, so I'll try and do that. Wow, we've got a big bag to the glare fix of the year, one huge bag. I'm hoping they're stopping doing that recently, the, the new Vulcan moon, yeah, we improved that quite a lot. Now then, oh, it's a huge deco sheet, absolutely end to end of the box, right to the end it is. So I think we'll have a look at that first. Now, decals. Decals. <laughs> Can't get out of saying it the way I've always said it. Right, let's have a look. We have got a humongous one here. Is it connected? No, it seems, I'm not going to take that off. It seems to be fixed at the bottom. Not a bad thing. What have we got? And who have made them? Is it Cartograph? Doesn't say doesn't say. I think it may be Airfix's own or possibly Cartograph. Don't quite look up to Cartograph standards, I think it's an Airfix set. Let's have a little zoom in and look closer. They do look nice and there's a lot of them. So, we have got Ten Squadron, we've got the Hornets here, the 213 Squadron, then we've got the New Zealanders down here, uh, Mark, the RAAF, uh, Oh, sorry, it's the, sorry, it's the Australians, not the New Zealanders, a big pun. Um, it's a, I thought it was the Kiwi, it's my glasses, it's the Wallaby. The kangaroo, I should say. Kangaroo. Um, and then you've got the Argentines now. Yes, we talked about that, didn't we? They were using the Falklands War, not for long. Um, nothing wrong with the camera, but it was just about 20 years out of date. Um, well, perhaps a bit more than that, 25 years out of date by the time they got to the Falklands. We'd obviously retired ours at that point, pretty much. Certainly most of them. Um, and then they were never going to be successful against the modern aircraft like the Sea Harrier, so we won't hold it against it. But could be an interesting scheme there. You've got some nice uh, Argentine flags there, look. Um, yeah. The Fuerza Aérea. The Air Force Argentina. So that's quite an interesting scheme. There's lots and lots of... Uh, stencils and even stencils for the bombs here. So all in all, pretty impressive uh, set of decals. Not bad at all. I'm quite liking those. Um, they haven't gone crazy with the carrier film too much either, so very good. Yes. <laughs> to get it back there, it's separated. Keep it as it was originally. So, then we've got some things to read. Let's have a look. Correction sheet, cut out this thing. Um, <laughs> got to say I'm, not, I'm not overwhelmed by this uh, the presentation quality here of the actual instructions. It looks like a photocopy of a th that's been re photocopied about 30 times, doesn't it? Uh, not exactly sharp, Airfix, but anyway. So this is Airfix long, long before Humble and of course this is in the home, uh, before Hornby I beg your pardon, it's in the Humbrol area this. So we've got, um, starts off we've got a pilot which is good because the Airfix seem to have forgotten that in some of their modern kits. Ejector seat going in there, building up your cockpit area. Um, all your instruments are going in here. Stick, or yoke it is in, it's actually a yoke. Um, and your pedals. So that's fairly detailed. Um, you have got the tandem style. Tandem? Side by side. 
actually got three crew, I didn't realise that, okay. Then we are going to build our uh, sort of uh, internal structure bomb bay. Then you've got to make sure you've got 100 grams in the, I was going to say in the nose, but it's actually behind the cockpit, but quite an unusual place to have your nose weight, isn't it, here? And we've got top and bottom uh, fuselage going in with those uh, gear bays, but of course in this case we have a resin alternative. Ailerons going together, engine being assembled here. That's actually the rear of it, the uh, sort of exhaust end I think. Is it though? No it isn't, I'm wrong, it's the intake. Sorry, my apologies. That's the intake, next page is the rear. Tell by how much longer the uh, uh, the fairing is in the centre, so it's always longer at the back end. Um, then you've got your uh, jet pipe going in, uh, slipper tanks, bringing it all together. Quite old school, isn't it? The way those wings fits in there doesn't look doesn't look great compared to you know for a big kit like this. I hope it's going to be strong enough. You know, and these days there'd be something a bit more sophisticated like the spa system that you saw on the Aero Club kit, which had a spa. Far more sensible. And then you bring in, obviously building up your tail planes, uh, horizontal stabilizers, tail. Oops, let me jump ahead a bit there. Bringing those together here. Building up your uh, undercarriage, wheels, tyres going together. Um, and then your nose leg. I'm bringing those into the appropriate bays here. Then you get your bomb bays either open or closed. And then you've got your option of the bombs themselves. So we've got a bomb rack, I think it's carrying four here. Four thousand pound bombs. You've got Matra rocket launches as well. And what looks to me like doesn't tell us unusually on air tricks. They usually say what the weapons are. Is it Martell? I think it's a Martell missile there. That one at stage 35, I think it's Martell. Um, Matra, uh, Sneb pods. Obviously different options on the pylons, obviously. Um, just a word actually, just reminded me of something. I'm just going to zoom you out. Uh, just going back to the history, something I forgot to mention at the beginning. When the aircraft was originally conceived, they intended it to have a single big jet engine down the centre. Then they decided to make it t two Neen engines, which they were going to put right at either side of the fuselage. And they had some issues with uh, centre of gravity. Uh, I think there was a feeling that it was too much, too much weight. It was right at the centre of the aircraft and it made the wings very flappy. So they decided to actually put the engines a third the way down the wing in the end. So it's like a third concept of the aircraft in fact. Quite interesting. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Back to the instructions. Let's get you back in here. So then you put in your bombs which are going into this bomb bay. More zoom wouldn't go amiss there, but there we go. And then you're actually fitting that bay. Um, there's an alternative which has a cannon pod, I think it is. I think it's an Aiden cannon pack. If you don't run it, you run it as a ground attack plane that's not going to be using bombs. It's almost like a, an add-on pack on stage 38. Or 37 is when you're just going with the regular bombs. Then you've got your flaps going in, which is good. And your, I think it was Martel, I think, I think it was Martel. Martel missiles, your uh, SNEB, uh, matter rocket pods, or your bombs on the pylons. And then finally you've got your glass work going in here with your canopy, nose, window for the, uh, the bomb aimer and a little stand at the back. And there we have it. Okay. Pull a call out sheet, which is quite a nice one. And there's the Argentines, look. Uh, based at Parana. Parana. It says Parana, doesn't it? It's a good name. <laughs> Um, quite an interesting scheme actually, that might be very tempting for somebody to do. Uh, you've got Scampton Royal Air Force 1953. So you see, we, we were using it in 53 and the Argentinians are using it 30 years later in 82. So it's, uh, yeah, it's p past its best, you know. Any aircraft is uh, coming to the end of its life 30 years on. You know. 
Anyway, um, 69 you've got them at uh, RAF Bruggen in Germany, uh, and that's the one that's got the Aiden gun cannon pack on it. And then you've got the Australian Air Force using them in Vietnam, which is cool, uh, in 1970. So you see it's, it's been around the world a bit and it's um, seen a bit of action in one war or another. Though we're not allowed to call the Falklands War war, I'm told. Falklands conflict apparently, because they never declared war, it's not officially a war. Okay. There's a correction sheet here, uh, and on this we've got the I'm not sure what it's saying. I think it's I think what it's saying is you should put the decal in first. I think that's what they've realised they didn't tell the customer. Put your decal in, then put your weapon stores on the pylons on afterwards. That's pretty much what it's saying, I think. Okay. So, let's look at the plastic then, that's what we're really here for. It's in a big bag, I'm told I must open it because we want to see it properly. And we want to sort of get our heads around how it does compare with the other multimedia kit which has got the um, resin and back for it. So, can I open this sympathetically? Oh, it's got, hey, I mean, look here, it's got tape. I don't need to use the knife. Simply just tape it for us. Oh, it's taped, but it's sealed, that's odd. That's a strange thing, isn't it? I thought it was open. No, it's not. It's completely sealed still. I'm sure what the tape was for. Anyway, I'll just get straight in. It's only one bag to open. We, just, you know, we know what the ethics are like, don't we? We were like. There don't appear to be any loose parts, which is good. It's good stuff. Let's see what we've got. We'll just take them as we find them. So, oh yes, it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, panel lines seem a bit big, wide, don't they? Well, certainly on the top they do. Look at it. Is that right? What do you think? Isn't it? They're fairly big, aren't they? It's looking quite wide. Um, hmm, 148, it's almost like 132nd. <coughs> anyway, there's, there's plenty of detail. Um, quite a strong, robust piece to the feel. On the other side, you can see where the, uh, the flaps go. You've got the framework of the internal structure of the spars. You can see the back of the spars, that's quite good. Um, it's got this rather strange of the era, um, this airfix kind of a hurly almost finish, pearlescent, sort of, not smooth, it's not glossy, it's not matte, it's somewhere in between, like a satiny finish. But it's quite a, it's like a decent sprue, no real problem. Then we have got, I think we've got two of these, so we'll just skip one. Nope, wrong, they're not, they're not the same. Sorry, we will look at it. Right, we've got here... Uh, sprue with the Bombay, Bombay cover here, and you've got your engine intakes and your engine exits here, and your fans, which look quite decent. Here's your, I think it's the Aiden Cannon or similar, the Cannon Pack, the nose of it, which looks really good, I'd say, and that's nice. It's almost like a slide moulding thing going on there. That's quite, it's got depth to it. Can you see that? It's really. Uh, Really nice. Um, you've got your Matra noses for your Matra rocket pod, snab pods here. Airfix and Notorious are not doing this very well. Uh, and Matchbox were the same actually. It's not the best I've ever seen, but it's better than what you get at 70 second scale, where they just have almost a, a little tiny nick in them, which doesn't look realistic or scale like. But anyway, if you're having the open uh, Bombay door, you've got the door itself there. And then we've got all sorts of uh, wicked weapons, mainly the thousand pound bombs, which there are many. Give me a bit, a bit too close. Um, yeah, it's quite a nice. It's, there's no flash, there's no flash. This is quite a decent quality, actually, I'd say. Plastic's quite hard as well, quite solid. Quite impressed with that. Right, then there's the second one. This is the one that I think has got, what did I say it was? Um, Martel, did I say? 
not sure if I'm right. Talking about the angle looks slightly different to Martel. The shape is similar though, that's what's got me fooled. It doesn't tell you. That's your bomb bay where the bombs are going to go. Here are the bombs themselves, more of them. In fact, there are different designs. Yes, there's two designs as you can see. There's that design and there's this design, so I'm pretty sure they're both £1,000. I think one's just like a free fall and one might be a, a spinning one. I'm not sure what the difference is. The one on the right here looks a lot more modern somehow, doesn't it, than these? That's, yeah. And, and this is your Matra Sneb pods here. Uh, and this is your Martel, we think, possibly. Uh, Rockets here. Again, no flash. Very nice. Quite impressed. Now what we got? Oop, great big one. Zoom out for this. So, we have the vertical uh, stabilizers, hor sorry, horizontal stabilizers. Then we've got the wheels. And the wheels look pretty good actually. The molding quality is really pretty fine here. Not bad at all, is it? No flash to speak of. Got your nose wheels here. Front gear. Oh, that's pretty good. I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's kind of a quantum leap forward, isn't it? Um, as you would expect, really, with the uh, the molding technology to 2008 compared to what we saw from the 1980s. Um, here you can see you've got the uh, reverse of your flaps here. Nicely moulded, isn't it? Now those are not ejector pin marks, those are, those are supposed to be there. That's quite nice. Yeah, I like it. Um, even the, um, that's the nose gear bay. I think that's fairly detailed, really. Can't complain. Whoops. Then we've got, whoops. Oh, I like something was moving around on the sprint then. Then we've got the um, cockpit area here. And you've got your... Uh, fan blades for the engine there, compressor blades I think, is that? then you've got your engine cowl, here's the internals of the cockpit with some of the instrumentation switch gear, all moulded as one, it's quite well moulded though, again it's uh, pretty decent. This kit is much better than I thought it was going to be, if I'm honest. I'm liking it, I don't know what it goes together like of course, but more cowls there for the engines and this is a crew access hatch here I think. Again, no flash to speak of, looking very good. Now here, something's rattling here, it's about to fall off, I'm not sure which part it is, but yeah it's that one. I've got one at the end here, it looks like it's about to part of company. Be a bit gentle with it. Um, so we've got our um, elevators and we've got slipper tanks the gear bays with the internal detail there and the uh, gear covers here you've got your three crew members your three guys here don't look too bad Is it about the right scale I think probably about right you touch on the small side I don't know and their ejector seats are here, and then you've got the uh, the tail, uh, well the rudder. Sorry, I keep calling it a tail because it's so damn big. Here's the rudder that comes standard with the kit. Um, and it's not the same as the prototype that we discussed earlier. And then finally, well, finally in the grey plastic, we have got our fuselage. Again, the panel lining is a bit a bit big looking, isn't it? It's a bit wide, like the Grand Canyon, yeah? <laughs> Reminds me of Matchbox a bit, this does, in that respect. I'm sure if you <clears throat> get plenty of paint on it there and you put primer down and paint it up, it probably look, when it's finished, probably look about right, actually. But sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard to get the balance right as a manufacturer because if you get it right when you're looking at the sort of kit coming out of the sprue, out of the box, very easy to uh, to get that spot on, but the manufacturer always has to factor in the fact you're going to cover it in multiple layers of paint, perhaps three or four, you know, and washes and things. So 
sometimes it's a little bit on the heavy side. I don't think it's such a problem because I think it fills in a bit as you get spraying. And finally, we have the clear parts, um, which I will open. I'll be very careful with them. I'm just going to open those. I'm curious to see what they're like, actually. Very curious. Here we go. It's a bit of excess plastic, a bit of a scratch in it, I think. I thought it was just a little strand of plastic. Now here you can see what I was talking about earlier, this covered area at the back of the canopy. Uh, the person who owns this kit, he wanted to make the original prototype, but it's all clear. But here you can clearly see you'll be masking that, and you'll have to mask it off to, uh, to cover over that back uh, area. Uh, and then you've got, it's nice and clear though, it's just a little bit, of, just a faint scratch on it. I'm sure that'll polish out without a problem. And you've got your bomber's window at the front, navigator's stroke bomber's window. And then you've got your top window for the other two crew behind you. So that's quite nice actually, it's nice clear parts apart from so it's got a faint scratch, but it is faint. Not gonna cause more much more than five or ten minutes to get rid of that, I think. I'm going to put some tape on that. Just to make sure it doesn't come adrift. Perhaps a little more tape, it's a me, might be better. <laughs> Uh, right, so there we have it. Well, I have to confess that I am uh, a lot more impressed with this Airfix kit than I thought I was going to be. I thought I was going to think it was fairly awful. Because some of their kits from that era are not that blessed in terms of quality. Um, I tell you what I'll do. I shall. It's so complicated. Now. I'm going to put that all back together later on, and I'm going to get, get the box back here, move that out of the way, and give you a summary. So actually, um, it's not a bad looking kit, um, apart from the very wide pan lining. Um, apart from that, it does seem pretty nice. Doesn't it stand up, does it? Pretty decent kit, I'd say. Um, I think factoring in, it's 2008. Um, up to now, it's the, probably the best one you can get. I think I'd give that 8 out of 10, maybe even 8.5. Um, nicer than I was expecting, no flash, nicely moulded, good tough strong plastic, uh, and plenty of detail, you know, there's a fair amount of detail in the cockpit and things like that, not bad at all. Um, obviously with a few extra you can really lift it up a bit and make it something really special. Anyway, there we go, I'm going to say 8.5 out of 10, I think that's fair, I think that's fair. I think that uh, for what it cost and uh, you know, the time it was built, I think that's quite quite a decent one from Airfix. And uh, yeah, it's a similar sort of era to the TSR2 kit or thereabouts. There we go. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you'll give me perhaps a bit more than eight and a half out of eight and a half out of ten with a thumbs up. <laughs> I'm out of practice. <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so because there's many, many hundreds. I think we've got over three hundred now uh, review vids alone and other things thrown in from time to time. Um, please, if you have subscribed, don't forget to ding the notification bell because that will give you early warning of up and coming videos in the near future. And until the next video, I would just say to you all, please look after yourselves. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, fingers crossed there might be another re-release or a new, I'm not sure if it's a new tool or a re-release of this one. Uh, I suspect it might be the latter, but we shall see. Um, I think Airfix are certainly planning to, to do the camera again in some form. So, Anyway, until next time, thanks a lot for joining me. Uh, pleasure to have you along. Uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.